So my my true or and false he- is the Sacramento Kings go big fish hunting uh, at the deadline and they make a trade for one of these guys. True or false? What do you oh, think? Oh man, that's a good one. So I'm gonna si- sort of take it from like a process of elimination yeah. point of yeah, view. I don't yeah. see Cat happening. So sure. to me, it's either Zach or or Pascal. Um, oh goodness, let me think because Pascal has quietly become my fate. Like Sacramento has become quietly my favorite Pascal destination. destination. Yeah, it would be super interesting. I think the thing that becomes most challenging about it is who comes back. You know what right. I mean? Yeah. And yeah. I don't see Sacramento being willing to move a Keegan Murray in any situation. And so then it comes mm-hmm. down to, does Toronto have any interest? I mean, maybe they do in Davion Mitchell and like a... I think you know, for, for starters, I think they would love Davion Mitchell. Like that's Yeah, I think he would fit player. really well. Yeah. Um, um, I don't know if that's enough for them to sell themselves on. We want, we're going to get... So yeah. like, they let's let's rewind a little, right? Let's rewind. Two, 2013 or 2012 2013 okay okay the toronto raptors have this have this weird roster it's not really working it's rudy gay (laughs) demar Derozan, and kyle lowry (laughs) it's all kind of finicky it's wonky they're winning games they're also losing games they shouldn't be kind of feels like this season all right Mm-hmm. And it's a wonky fit, wonky roster. Demar isn't getting the shine that he needs to. Kyle isn't getting the shine that he needs to because Rudy is taking up a lot of these shots. Okay, mm-hmm. uh, go and search up the the no, not this guy, not this guy <laughs> game winner that Rudy hit on the the Toronto Raptors. Anyways, um, so the Raptors went ahead and traded with none other than the Sacramento Kings. They traded Rudy Gay to the Kings in exchange for Grievous Vasquez, Chuck Hayes, Patrick Patterson, and I think they probably got like a pick or like a second round pick or something along the <laughs> okay. lines of that one too. Um, my point is none of those guys are in are in the league anymore. Right. Uh, Rudy Gay is still in the league. He's still kicking. I think he's on Atlanta. <laughs> uh, but yeah. he's he, obviously he's not the player he is anymore. Grievous Vasquez, however, was they were able to flip him I think mm-hmm. a year or two after that in exchange for Norman Powell, a pick that became Norman Powell and a pick that became OG Ananobi. So <laughs> essentially unreal. they built their entire future off of that Rudy Gay trade with Patrick Patterson becoming a really important part of their, like their, their little mm-hmm. run that they had. And, you know, Grievous Vasquez was important for a couple of years there. And then they ch- turned that into Norman Powell and OG Ananobi. And obviously, you know, we know what happens with Norman OG. I just wow. think maybe there's a world in which that can happen here as well, where you're not yeah. getting a massive swing deal for Pascal, mm-hmm. but you're getting, you know, reserves, you're getting guys that can maybe fit this team a little bit more. Something that pops up is like, hey, what if the Kings are willing to move off of Kevin Herter, right? Mm-hmm. Kevin Herter fits the build, shooting guy, that's that works well with Scotty Barnes. Okay, now you're talking about Davion Mitchell, Kevin Herter, and like salary in order to get Pascal. Mm-hmm. And you're like, well, if that's the only thing they can get, you know, um, yeah, maybe. Uh, and to be fair, there are other teams that could probably match that and do better. Yeah. I'm not sure. But ultimately I'm just thinking Sacramento is in a good position to go out and trade for one of these guys. So that's yeah. where my question comes of true. Yeah. Players. Well, I'm glad you provided all that context because one, I didn't know that. And that is amazing <laughs> that that is how that all came together. But I actually do think that I was initially going to say that Pascal, I would, I wasn't going to put him as the most likely, but now I'm sitting here thinking and I'm like, okay, let's just do the math on some of the, the guys that would, that would move at first. I was like, okay, Masai is going to want Keegan Murray. He's not going to get Keegan Murray. I, yeah. maybe I'm wrong, but that's very, very hard for me to see. And um, by the way, like there's, there's a good chance that like, that's the end of the conversation there. Like, yeah. Call, and that's like, you know, hey, exactly. you Pascal, the, they say no. They're like, no, we, you, unless you give right. us Keegan, Keegan Murray, we don't want him, you know? Right. And so I, at first I was like, that's how that's going to go. It's not going to go anywhere. They're not going to get Pascal. However, yeah, a Har- they have their picks, a Harrison Barnes to match the salary, Kevin Herter and Davion Mitchell group. I don't hate that for Toronto. I think Toronto could potentially extend a Harrison Barnes 
return um, and get some some yeah. significant usage out of Kevin Herter and Davion Mitchell. And even though Kevin Herter has been really solid for Sacramento, it just opens things up. Doing that deal opens things up for Malik Monk, and you can have other guys step up. So that deal, that package makes a lot of sense for Sacramento. So I do think that the Pascal situation is definitely one to monitor. And Davion Mitchell, there have even been times with him where it's like, he he's not going to get the opportunity that like when he got drafted, what it looked like he could become and how quickly he would be ready. It doesn't look like he's necessarily going to get that in Sacramento and a place like Toronto could be exactly what he needs. So I'm going to go ahead and say true. I think okay. you, I think with your, your history lesson, I think you have officially talked me <laughs> in to Pascal to Sacramento. I love it. And you, you know what? Like it's not, to be fair, it's not just Pascal. Like Levine signed when he was a restricted free agent, he signed an offer sheet with Sacramento to go there. Uh, this was before Monty uh, Monty McNair came there, so like right. there's there's history there. But still, like maybe maybe there's interest there for for him to go there, uh, a place that is closer to home for him, a place that is obviously has an incredible environment in terms of winning and whatnot. And I think Sacramento. You know, we talked about this uh, a while ago when it came to like free agency, right? We thought they might go for Kyle Kuzma. We mm -hmm, thought they might yep. make, make a, you know, big swing trade for someone. And in the summer, they kind of stayed pat. And I wonder if they're regretting that a little bit because mm -hmm. they're 14th in offensive rating. Uh, their defense has gotten better so far this year. They're 18th compared to, you know, last year where they were like 23rd or 24th. I do think. You know, they have a really, really good core, but the West around them has also gotten better. So maybe mm -hmm. maybe there is that hunger for them to go out and trade for someone. And also, yeah. by the way, it's not like you're going to be as the Sacramento Kings. It's not like you're going to go out there and try to get a free agent. Right. It's right. not like you're going to go out there and try to sign anybody. So what's the best way to do that? Go and trade for them. Um, right. No, and I just think that maybe maybe gives me a little bit of thing sure. To be like, I Maybe. think it really I think it really sets up nicely because they're they're middle in the pa middle of the pack in a lot of different categories and so even you know whatever your feelings are about a Zach Levine fit playing with pace and adding the scoring like there it, it does make a lot of sense especially considering the narrative around Zach Levine right now and the fact that you could probably get him for a pretty friendly like price team friendly uh price um and so i do think yeah. both are very possible options i do think some of the other zach levine scenarios that we have talked about are make more sense and i would expect those to be more likely but the pascal one is not something that should be overlooked at all i think i could see that i could see that come together really quickly in terms of sacramento being like Hey, that's exactly the type of move we need to sort of get over the hump and really solidify a core, even e even more so than they have already done. Um, and Monty McNair has shown that he is not afraid to be aggressive, super aggressive. So yeah. um, I wouldn't I wouldn't overlook that at all. Follow House at Just S Barahini on all socials and at the Lauren Gun on Twitter. The Objective Basketball Podcast, delivering the NBA to you like no other.